What is up, everyone? Gary and Whopping. here with GBL Iguanas. Fancy new wireless Bluetooth mic. So we can try and get some of those. Uh, I know we've been having some audio issues with kind of things being a little bit quiet or cutting out. Um, darn, darn iPhones, you know, they're great, but sometimes they're a little problematic. So I picked this thing up off Amazon. Hopefully it works pretty well. But today we are starting a new uh, kind of a new series. I'm going to call it a. Uh, the Species Spotlight, um, and kind of, you know, I'm going to try at least, you know, once a week or so, um, try and like dive a little bit deeper into the animals that we have, um, kind of their backstories, and then, oh yeah, what's up, Diego? And then a little bit more about the species in general. So we figured why not start off today with everyone's favorite, Diego, who is also our logo. Keep an eye out. Oh, it got a little bit dirty. Got a website uh, launching very, 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 very soon. Um, that's gonna have merch, so for shirts, t uh, hoodies, um, all sorts of different. Yeah, there's a coffee mug. Uh, so keep an eye out on that. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at GBL Iguanas, um, for Facebook, Instagram, it's GBL underscore Iguanas. You'll see as soon as that, that goes live, it should be by the end of the month at the absolute latest, but hopefully even before that. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of jump right into it here. So the species we are working with today, um, Cyclora lewisii, which is the Grand Cayman Blue Rock Iguana. Um, of course, in the United States, in the pet trade here, um, they are hybridized, which we'll get into. But so the, the pure uh, lewisii is how it's commonly referred to uh, in the hobby. It's a lot easier to say Grand Cayman Blue Rock Iguana every time. Um, of course, as it sounds, they are from the Grand Cayman Islands down in the Caribbean. Um, there is, I believe there's 11 different subspecies of Cyclora. Um, every island down there pretty much has uh, their own subspecies. So, you know, Hispaniola, Cuba, uh, Cayman Brac, San Andros, the Bahamas, Jamaica, all those islands all have different, um, different subspecies of Cyclora. Um, yeah, so these guys are from the Grand Cayman Islands. He's a little cold because he just decided to, you know, be a lazy butt today and get up a little bit late. So he hasn't really completely heated up. So normally he has a lot more blues. Um, but yeah, so they're they're actually a critically, critically, critically endangered species down there. Um, you know, there's been a lot of efforts by some really amazing folks to conserve these animals. Um, there's the Blue Iguana Recovery Program down there that has just done so much for them to get them from you know i think at, at the lowest point i think it was just like 20 years ago or not even they were down to i think about 25 animals and now i if i'm not mistaken now i believe they're up over a thousand um, of course critically endangered from everything from tourism from you know habitat destruction which can kill animals um, non-native species being introduced so dogs cats um, rats aren't an issue for the adults, but for babies they are. Um, there's even green iguanas down there now um, that got introduced that are, you know, they're competing for uh, space down there. Uh, but thankfully they're, they're, they're mounting their comeback and they're doing well because these guys are just absolutely incredible animals. Down in the description below, I'll put the, uh, the links for some of those programs as well, just so you can see what the purists look like and see what kind of great work is being done with them. Um, yeah, so the Cyclera lewisii, you know, they're going to range in size. Females typically are going to be, you know, three, three and a half foot or so, maybe seven pounds, eight pounds for a big girl. Males, of course, are going to get a little bit bigger. Um, and lizards, that tends to be how it goes. These guys, so Diego, he's he's pretty much four foot on the dot. Um, and that's that's about right for an adult lewisii. Um, last time we weighed him, I believe he was 12 pounds or so. Um, he's still young, you know, he's, I believe, eight now. Um, so as he ages, I mean, he'll probably, he'll probably get to right around 14, 15 pounds. But you can see we've got him nice and lean. Um, the Grand Cayman Iguanas, you know, they're, they're awesome. Um, they have a bunch of personality, just like pretty much all rock iguanas do. But it's, you'll kind of, if you work with multiple species of them, or you get the ability to interact with multiple species, you'll get to see that each one, they kind of have their own 
kind of quirks to how they normally are. So like the Lewis size uh, versus like the Rhino Iguanas, which is a uh, Cyclora Cornuta, um, the Cuban Iguana, which is the other common one in the pet trade, which is Cyclora Nubula. Um, they all kind of have their own little quirks. Oh, we got some fresh water here from the creature. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Yeah, so the, the Lewis size here, as, as babies, they are known to be a little bit feistier than, you know, than like the Cubans, let's say. Um, they, they sometimes can take a little bit longer to tame down, but once you get that, get past that threshold with them and they get to be like this, they're all, as adults, most cyclor are, are gonna be pretty much the same as far as being just very sociable like this. Um, Diego loves his attention. You can see him sitting there shutting his eyes, enjoying his pets, enjoying his, uh, his dinner. It's like a statue. Oh, well, good morning, handsome. What's up? <laughs> God, I love Cyclorus so much. Um, yeah, and so going into the hybridization side of them, um, you know, back in the 70s, uh, Life Fellowship Church down in uh, South Florida, um, they imported all sorts of really awesome, amazing animals um, at the time. And the Lewis eyes were some of the ones that they got. Back then, they weren't nearly as infamous as they are now. Um, but so that brought them into the U.S., into the pet trade. And you had, you know, I don't know all the names of the folks way back when working with them. But I know uh, Sam Piscucci worked with the Piers, Tom Crutchfield, of course, and there's a good handful of others that that kept them and successfully bred them all throughout, you know, the 80s, um, even into I believe the early 90s when their conservation status changed uh, to being more heavily endangered. And then at that point, once you get that high up on the CITES list, you just, you can't own them as pets, um, or you can't get more you can get grandfathered in if you had one before all of that stuff of course you were able to keep them but you couldn't get new uh, get any new ones imported in or anything like that or if they had babies couldn't keep them they had to go back to the zoo or back uh yeah so they were they weren't as heavily bred back then because they weren't as well like i said as infamous as well known for pets so over the years the pures were then hybridized with um with the Cy Cyclora nubula, which is the Cuban rock iguana, but they were also hybridized with the Cayman brack iguana. Um, Cayman brack, of course, it's, uh, it's also called the Sister Island iguana, which is right there with the Grand Caymans. Um, so that's typically the uh, combination that you're gonna see on these Lewis size. Um, there are still a couple of pures left in private collections. Um, of course, they're all, they were ones that were grandfathered in and they're actually in a, a stud book, basically, so they can be kept track of. As well as, of course, there are some, there's, you know, a lot of zoos around the country still have some of the pures. Um, but a couple, uh, there are still a couple in the pet trade that are, that seem to be alive and, and doing well. Um, Diego here, with all of his ancestry, you know, he, he most likely has, uh, has quite a higher percentage of Lewis eye in him compared to Cuban or Cayman Brack. When he's fired up, I mean, he's he looks almost pure. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately, so there's no at this point in time, you know, you can't get your hands on any on any full pures. Um, hopefully, within time, you know, the the Lewis eyes down in the islands will get to that point where maybe we can get to them. Um, yeah, so they've just all been hybridized. So now, I mean, you'll see. Now it's typically you're going to see Lewis I hybrid to Lewis I hybrid, and you know the higher end ones are going to be the ones that are the most blue. So having one like Diego, and then once we find him a nice high blue girl, those are going to be the more desirable babies. You were doing something weird. Oh, what are you doing, boy? What are you doing over there? Yeah, so the ones with high blue parents, and especially if you can track their bloodlines down, um, as far as the pet trade, those are going to be the ones that are more desirable. Um, they're going to cost quite a bit more as well, you know, I mean, a, a really high blue Lewis eye um, with ancestry that, you know, you know a little bit more of. Typically, you're $1,000 to, you know, $1,250 for a baby. Um, a lot, some of the lower end ones, I mean, you'll see them going as low as sometimes three or $400, but those are ones that are going to be much, much, much more heavily hybridized uh, in their bloodlines. 
So those aren't gonna be quite as desirable, especially if you really want that stunning blue animal that's gonna be sky blue. You're gonna want ones that have, you know, all sorts of crazy blues in them. And as he heats up, so all of those dark, the, the dark grays on him, those are all gonna light up. Shedding a little bit there on his tail. Yeah, so Diego, he's a good one. Um, we're, we're very fortunate to have uh, gotten him. I've had him, this May will be two years. He was produced by Jacob Crawford. Um, and like I said in the past, somehow he's been passed around and we are his fourth owner, I believe. Um, I don't know if you want to count his very first owner. So we're the third or fourth owner. Uh, we're going to be his last as he's giving me a side eye. He better be giving me a happy side eye because he lives the life in here. You can see uh, all this room. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of a kind of mess stuff everywhere. He likes busting out of weak spots all over the basement, but He's in a 12 foot by nine foot. It's a chicken coop that we uh, that I put some insulation boards around to kind of help keep the warmth in. Um, I don't have his basking lights on up there because one of the lamps has a, uh, a bulb that's shattered and I have not gotten it out or the from out of the socket anyway. There's no broken glass in there. Um, so he's got a nice ceramic heat emitter, a mega ray, and uh, you know a halogen bulb. So he gets all of the heat that he needs. But yeah, he's. He's living the life in here, um, and this is how iguanas, these iguanas really should be kept. Um, they need the space. He utilizes every single inch of this place. And if I could give him bigger at the moment, you know, I'd give all of them bigger, but you know, I've said before, when we move into a different property, we're gonna definitely go uh, minimum 20 foot by 10 foot for all of these guys because they're just, they're such an active species and they're gonna use every single inch. Um, so yeah, so these Lewis size, they're, they're really cool. They're, I, I've, I've got to put them as my, my favorite reptile species. Um, whether one, not even just ones that we own, just in general. Uh, they're just so cool. They have such a, uh, a crazy backstory and history. They're beautiful. They're so intelligent. Um, to learn a little bit more about them, so this isn't a paid promotion, anything like that. There's this book out there called The Little Blue Book, A Short History of the Grand Cayman Blue Iguana by Frederick J. Burton. Um, if you can get your hands on this book, it's a really, really, really great read. It talks all about the history of, uh, of the Lewis size from basically being founded up to almost present day. I believe this book was maybe 2009, 2010, something like that. Um, but it goes all into the history, goes all into the conservation efforts all the programs that were put into place for them. Um, it has a little, uh, in the back here, kind of has like a little dating profile for a lot of the uh, a lot of the ones that they use in their breeding programs down there. Oh, I can't do this. Uh, uh, I don't know, they're in here somewhere. But it's a really, really cool read. Um, I definitely do recommend it. If you own these guys, especially, I recommend it. Um, if you want to own one, I recommend it. Even if you don't own one or really want to own one, we're just a reptile nerd. It's just a great book with a lot of really, really, really good information. Um, so yeah, that should be, I mean, that's a lot of uh, some good in-depth info on, uh, on the cyclores. Of course, if there's any other questions that any of y'all might have related to them that I might be able to answer. Um, not so much her, she doesn't pay attention. Um, if there are any other questions or anything like that that I might be able to help anybody out with um, about these just awesome, awesome, awesome animals, um, or if there's other things you want to see about the uh, the Lewis size, whether Diego, you know, Freddy in the Sky, Baby G, any of the other pairs that we have, please put that in the comments below. Um, I was, I know this video isn't the most exciting video <laughs> in the world, um, but it's just something I thought would be, you know, for for those of us that really, really love these animals. Just being able to sit and talk about them, uh, you know, it's just, for me, it's fun. So for me, this is a fun video. Um, yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit about Diego and his, uh, his heritage. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, do all of that sort of stuff. This video gets a thousand views and, and a thousand likes. I will dump ice cold water on Auburn. I know every, no, a thousand views. I don't know what I'm saying views. You know, let's make it even, let's make it easier. Let's make it more attainable since we're a new channel. If this video 
gets 50 likes. 50. Cold water all over her. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, so thank y'all for sticking around. <laughs> Whatever, I ain't afraid. Maybe a little bit. But yeah. All right. So we'll see y'all on the next time. Um, you know, if it, let us know what the what the next species that you'd like to see us do. Um, whether it be the rhino iguanas, the lesser Antillian iguanas, our bearded dragon, blue tongue skink. You know, one of our red tail boas, reticulated python, Burmese python. You know, over time, I'm gonna do this for for every animal and hopefully make it a little bit more exciting for y'all. But yeah. Peace out, Cub Scout.